Hey guys, Patrick Albersman at Aerospace Pal. Today we'll be going over the top five mistakes using a TVS in a D160 design. Um, if you need links, uh, they'll be down below in the description. So let's just get started. All right, so the number one mistake using a TVS in a D160 design is on power buses. People assume that if you have a 28 volt DC bus, you should put a 28 volt working voltage TVS or sometimes they get smart and they say, well, the abnormal voltage goes up to 32.2 volts. Uh, so I'm going to put a 33 volt TVS because you don't want it to clamp during normal operation, obviously. Well, what actually ends up happening is during D160's abnormal surge uh, that goes up to 60 or 80 volts, um, depending on your requirements, that will break over during an abnormal surge and an abnormal surge actually lasts for 100 milliseconds. Now during that 100 milliseconds what we have is unrestricted power being put to the TVS. Now here's your power source that goes up to 80 volts or 60 volts and it's going to have some source impedance but not much and really what it's supposed to represent is the aircraft's um, power source so that's going to have very little source impedance. Here I'm representing 25 milliohms, and you can see if you put 80 volts through 25 milliohms to a TVS, that's going to be a whole lot of power. And you can do your own calculations using different source impedances. But just for this example, we're talking about 45 kilowatts for 100 milliseconds. And in case you're wondering where that lines up in the TVS datasheet, here's a 30 kPa datasheet. Um, it can handle a lot of power. However, the graph stops at one millisecond. It doesn't even go out to 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. So I extrapolated the data, not saying this is valid, but um, just wanted to give a pictorial on where this lines up on a TBS datasheet. So it's well off the charts here, and yep, it's all the way up here. So there's no question this huge TBS during a D160 surge is going to explode and blow up. So that would be your number one mistake is using a TVS to clamp the abnormal surge during D160. The second biggest mistake, maybe third biggest mistake, is assuming that a TVS clamps like a Zener. Now we think of Zeners in a small signal scenario where we're only driving a little bit of current and we're creating a voltage reference or um, sometimes it's used to protect, but mainly for a voltage reference. Now, if you look and you actually drive a little bit more current past the small signal scenario, they actually do start to creep up and you can see this 72 volt Zener, you can see it start to creep up as you put even 100 milliamps, or sorry, 10 milliamps in there. So then the question is, if you have a 33 volt TBS, how does that clamp? Uh, does it uh, clamp like a Zener? I already mentioned it doesn't clamp like a Zener. Uh, one misconception is it doesn't start to clamp at 33 volts. They have a little bit buffer of margin in there. Uh, 33 volts is the working voltage that you'd want to use it at. It starts to clamp around 36, 37 volts even. Um, and then it keeps going up, keeps going up the more current you put into it. So the max clamping voltage at the maximum current that it can be rated for at the 10 1000 waveform. What do you think a 33 volt TVS clamps at? Is it 36 volts? Is it 39? 53.3 volts. Yeah, that's pretty shocking to some people. You have a 33 volt TVS and people sometimes assume that it's going to clamp pretty much at 33 volts, maybe 35 volts. Uh, this won't stop clamping if you keep putting current into it until 53.3 volts. Alright, number three, third biggest mistake is when TBSs are used on digital lines. And don't get me wrong, they definitely can and should be used on digital lines. But what people don't know and sometimes don't make this uh, connection is that TBSs actually have a lot of capacitance on them normally. So if you look at your... Uh, 30 KPAs, 15 KPAs, even your SMAJs, SMBJs, SMCJs, very common TVSs. Uh, what you need to look at is the capacitance on those TVSs. So 
if we just take a look at a data sheet here, you'll see this TVS actually has an absorbent amount of capacitance. Now I think this is a 30 kPa data sheet, um, but if you put this on a digital line per se, even a, a 50 volt working voltage has somewhere on the order of 5,000 picofarads. And think about how that is gonna affect your digital lines. Okay, number four is using a ferrite bead in series with the TVS pulse. Now, if you think about it, a ferrite bead is used for filtering. That's great to have right by your connector. It's gonna shunt high impedance frequencies or block high impedance frequencies. But the thing you don't wanna do is to put that ferrite bead and then have a TVS right behind it. You can see if this is the pin of your connector uh, and maybe you have a capacitive filter here, a ferrite bead, a capacitive filter here. A standard pi filter, great for blocking EMC, um, EMI emissions. But if you have your TVS behind it, what you're going to see is that during that lightning pulse that travels through your TVS, it's also going to travel through your ferrite bead, which is not rated for a high power design. Here you can see I just did a little simulation. I'm getting over 500 amps going through that TVS. And guess what's going to happen to your ferrite bead? It's definitely going to blow up. So that's the number four mistake in um, D160 using TVSs is to put the TVS behind the ferrite bead and putting the ferrite bead in line with the lightning protection. All right, number five mistake, could have been number one mistake, but it's a little less tangible, is people pulling TVS designs from other programs. Um, they say, well, this program used a 30 kPa TVS and it has level level three or four lightning. Uh, we have level three or four lightning. I'm gonna use that same TVS. Um, you need to know a lot of things in order to make a qual by similarity analysis and ensure that your design is gonna be, it's gonna be right for your design. Uh, just to name a few, um, was it used in a shielded bundle? Um, is your bundle shielded? Maybe it has a different IO that was in that cable bundle. Um, so it's not tested the same. There's also test tolerances uh, and there's part tolerances. Both can range up to 20%. So it could have passed before and now it's not gonna pass possibly. It, you might wanna do that analysis, analysis to see how close you are, how much margin you have. Sometimes people don't even, they pull from designs that haven't even been tested or worse, it's been tested and it failed. Um, it's not good to just blindly take from another program without investigating uh, what their test setup was or what their test results were. Another thing is what's the return line for, for the TVS? Is it returning to chassis? Is it returning to a power lead that goes through a LISN? Um, that's gonna affect your results significantly. So these are all things you gotta know. Um, definitely there's probably more things you gotta know. That's just off the top of my head. Okay, last I'll name some honorable mentions. I think honorable mentions might be um, thinking uh, TVS has a forward voltage of 0.7 volts. Uh, definitely doesn't. It's uh, gonna be over a volt. And then also, if you're pushing current through it in the reverse direction, which normally you would do uh, with using a unidirectional TVS uh, with a negative lightning waveform, you're gonna get uh, four volts, five volts, even up to 10 volts um, across that. So if you're protecting something like optocoupler, it really can be um, a problem. So you want to take a look at that, maybe even do a simulation. And then another thing is using TVSs in parallel. Um, a lot of people assume if you need more power, I'm just going to put TVSs in parallel. Well, that's really not the best method. Um, because TVSs break over at different voltages. So if you get one that breaks over earlier, that's going to take all the current and it's not going to share the current load uh, across the TVSs. And I have a link to it below. There's a little study that shows you a little bit of the numbers there. But it's really best to either select a higher power TVS or um, if you can't select a higher power TVS, um, you want to try and stack them in series. 
So you're going to lower the working voltage. Um, if you're putting two in series, you're going to half the working voltage and put two of them stacked on top of each other. Um, and then number three, if it if you can't do the higher power, you can't do the series, you're going to put them in parallel. But there you really got to you got to pay attention to the working voltage and the clamp over. All right, I appreciate you watching. Uh, top TVS mistakes in DO160. If you're looking for more DO160 information or knowledge, um, come visit aerospacepal.com. Uh, link below. There's more. Sign up for the blog. Love to have you. Thanks, guys.